right, shifting gears now, I wanted to get Pastor Chuck Baldwin on last week when I saw this article. Franklin Graham on the wrong side of the Bible in history. He's come out calling for a massive restriction on the Second Amendment. The official Catholic newspaper, we're going to show that, has come out and said, quote, repeal the Second Amendment. Uh, you've got uh, every denomination I know of. I can't go to a church, a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a Bible church, without hearing government worship. And 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 uh, I, for one, have had enough, okay? And he wrote the book, Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. We also sell that at InfoWarsStore.com. Great book to give to your pastors. But but they're, they're under 501c3 government funding. But now they're coming out after the guns. We've got to go after them. And I wanted to ask Pastor Baldwin biblically. He doesn't really need an introduction here on this broadcast. Uh, he's a radio talk show host, syndicated columnist. Uh, of course, I've uh, been a, a pastor many years in Florida. Now he's out in the uh, mountain area building a remnant community out there. Uh, staunch defender of the Bill of Rights Constitution, ChuckBaldwinLive.com. I wanted to ask him in this great time of evil... Uh, what do we do? What does he think we should do? Uh, because there is a purge against constitutionalists. It's begun. And as every other authoritarian regime, it starts quietly. You know, it, it, a lot of times the, the arrest that, you know, for, for, for petty made up stuff starts and, and no one even covers it and no one recognizes it until it just becomes overwhelming or the dictatorship collapses. So Pastor Baldwin, thank you so much for coming on with us. Hey, great to be with you, Alex. Thank you very much. Well, you just heard that seven-minute intro there where I was talking about all this. Where do you want to start first? I mean, it's like the dam broke, the hedge is being lifted, evil is flooding in, and the preachers are all bought off. Yeah, unfortunately, the 501c3 tax-exempt status has made slaves out of most pastors and churches. They fear the IRS. They fear the loss of their tax-exempt status. And so when they get into the pulpits, they are afraid to discuss anything that might be controversial. Plus, let's not forget this. There's a lot of people out there in the congregations that are very weak, very wishy-washy. They do not want to hear the hard issues. A lot of pastors are deathly afraid of offending their own congregations. And they're afraid of losing uh, the tithes and offerings of people. They're afraid of the controversy that may erupt inside the congregation. That combination has completely neutered the pulpits of America. And you're right. Uh, the churches and the pastors of America uh, are literally contributing to the decline of our liberties here in this country today. It's now come out that the official communist Chinese government is advising Obama on gun policy. If you just tuned in, folks, just the People's Daily repeatedly, it's been national news a few months ago, they are now demanding every Hollywood film be put by them. No form of communism or authoritarianism can even be shown. Forget criticizing communist China. Nothing can be shown. We're now not just run by the New World Order here. The communist Chinese that own our debt are occupying us. And, and, and the reason I bring that up is, look at this. The preachers are afraid to say anything that offends, so now they're banning Lego toys of Jabba the Hutt because some Muslims said it was supposed to be a Muslim just out of the clear blue sky. Political correctness is political control. The Soviet Union called it political correctness. And 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 so now the preachers are like, I don't want to offend anyone. That's then used as a weapon to where now they can't even teach marriage. They, they won't even criticize abortion because it might offend someone. Now they're taking the crosses out of churches all over America. I know you know about that initiative. I mean, this is it. Do you agree the takeover is now happening? Oh, there's no question. I think it's been happening, Alex. Uh, you know, back uh, years ago when, when I was running for president in 2008, I was going around the country and talking to pastors, and I, I couldn't tell you how many of them uh, would say, well, you, you know, we believe in what you stand for, and, and we know that you're speaking the truth, and we know that we need change, and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, after all, we're 501c3 and we can't get involved and, you know, so we'll just pray for you. So, again, that 501c3 tax exempt status has been the tool uh, that Lyndon Johnson first created back in the 1950s that he knew what would happen. He knew it would neuter and control the pastors and churches. And that's exactly what it's done. And now when you get guys like Franklin Graham and Richard Land, who, by the way, is a member of the CFR, as you know, coming out saying that they support uh, Barack Obama's gun control initiatives, especially the universal background check. 
You know, it, it shows the power that the government has over many of these evangelical leaders. By the way, Alex, that's why my son Tim and I have written a brand new book called To Keep or Not to Keep, Why Christians Should Not Give Up Their Guns. It's a brand new book. It's just about to be released from the press. I want to carry it. I want to carry it because we carry your book on Romans 13. Absolutely. Very yeah, exciting. This is going to be a blockbuster because we go into the New Testament, the Old Testament, the entire scripture, and we prove conclusively that nowhere does the Bible teach that Christians should surrender their guns to any would-be tyrant. And we go into it in depth. It's a blockbuster book. There's nothing like it in print. And when Christians get a hold of this, and even non-Christians, they're going to realize that natural law, biblical law, revealed law is on the side of the Second Amendment. And so this is going to be a book that's really going to help people understand the issue. And somebody needs to send a copy to Franklin Graham, by the way. We're going to talk about that uh, coming up here in a moment, but uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it, uh, but I followed it. But I, I talk to vets every day who've had a leg blown off or something. They they get them to say they're depressed uh, and they take their child, even though their wife is fine. They're not just taking veterans guns now. They're also taking their children. And then you see cases where anti-government parents, engineers with no criminal record, Air Force veteran, they took their kids, yeah, from the government that had had them for a year, and then they demonize InfoWars.com because the, the guy had a sticker at his house in Florida. And, I mean, uh, are they going to, like, come grab my kids and say I'm anti-government? It's like, well, there go your kids to a re-education camp. I mean, they're just hiding this pure authoritarianism in plain view. And every TV show now demonizes Christians demonizes pro-lifers, demonizes gun owners. I mean, it's it, it's like the running man or something. You turn on any show, and they're demonizing patriots and saying we're terrorists. I, I mean, this is Twilight Zone level. Yeah, it is. And what's, what's amazing to me relative to the uh, way you've started the discussion here with pastors is do these pastors really think that by them sitting back and not speaking up and not taking a stand, that they're going to be spared? Do they really think that they're going to be overlooked? You know, and I think this is very comparable to uh, the Nazi Germany uh, period of history when there were some 14,000 evangelical churches in Germany at the time. And of the 14,000 evangelical churches in Nazi Germany, uh, it was becoming Nazi Germany, only 800 resisted Adolf Hitler. That's about 5%. Now think about it, Alex. If, if 25% had have resisted Hitler, if 50% had have resisted Hitler, in the entire history of the world would have been changed. But because the pastor said and did nothing, Hitler was allowed to seize control of the government and then the country and enact all these totalitarian... And 20 million, they were like 75 million. Germany, counting 2 million soldiers, lost 20 million people. Talk about a judgment. Talk about doing nothing. And it's the same story over and over. And authoritarians every time come after Christians. That, you know, that's the point is that you're never going to do enough for them. Exactly. Exactly my point. And that's what the preachers don't understand. They think that by remaining neutral and trying to maintain politically correct messages, et cetera, that they are somehow going to be spared any of this. They're in denial. Excellent. Well, it's also a cop out. They go, we're trying to win souls. Yeah, we know the evil's taken over. I went to a big church yeah. this weekend with Dave Mustaine when he was in town. Pretty good sermon overall. I like the preacher, but I saw the assistant preacher and stuff looking at us like scared, like, oh my gosh, there's Alex Jones. Man, that guy's trouble. And I, I, I didn't do anything or say anything. I, you know, I just, you know, went and checked out that church because my wife likes it. But my point is, is that I've friends and family that go to Baptist churches, they get letters going, don't even talk about politics at church dinners. I mean, this is the Soviet Union. And and, and as you know, the uh, Thomas Jefferson didn't even say religion shouldn't be involved in things. It said government sh cannot be involved in religion. As the right. First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. But they've taken separation of church and state and made a debate about does it exist or not when it never even meant that. It meant the government has no jurisdiction, but they trick people into 501c3. They stop being a church and become a charity. 
Yeah, that, no, the, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. They're not a church. They are a, a government corporation. The pastor is not a pastor. He is a, he is a corporate officer. Same with the deacons, the elders. They are viewed as corporate officers of the state. And I, I really, I really believe, and this is kind of harsh for me to say, but I, I mean, I've been in the heart of this battle for, for so long. And I really believe what I'm about to tell you, Alex. I really believe that at the heart of the problem, our pastors and churches today are state worshipers. They are. I really believe that. They, they do not worship the king of the universe, the king of kings and lord of lords. They pretend that they do. They get, they sing songs. They have praise services. You know, they have worship services. They talk about Jesus. They, they preach the gospel, etc. But every time when push comes to shove and you got to make a decision, government is going to be the the one that you side That's with. That's right. You who 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 you serve is who you obey. Exactly right. Exactly right. And who you give preference to and who you give loyalty to and who you give sovereignty to. And what's happened in our churches today is that they have fallen for this erroneous Romans 13 interpretation that Tim and I wrote about and you sell the book on your show and so many of your re- uh, listeners and readers have, have purchased it. That Romans 13 misinterpretation has propagandized the church, indoctrinated the church to the point that they're no longer able to properly analyze government from a biblical point of view. It was they, Hitler's it, most quoted passage in his radio addresses do what i say romans 13 do what i say romans 13 when it's we're going to talk about that but first the gun grabbing you'll be with us into the next hour with uh, pastor greg dixon who is not 501c3 and so they seize the biggest church in america stay with us by the way speaking of his book uh, it's available uh, up at uh, the website infowarstore.com romans 13 the true meaning of submission uh, and we're also uh, carrying the film that I produced, Strategic Relocation, A Noble Lie Exposing False Flag Terror, and After the Tribulation. Uh, and, and I want to ask Pastor Baldwin his view on that, because I just see the whole thing as a cop-out, uh, you know, whether it's pre, mid, post, whatever. But I always hear, well, it's the end of the world anyway, so why fight evil? Why not go out and warn people then? I think God's going to say he didn't know you. But this is a short segment. We're going to have you with us into the next hour on Pastor Dixon, who was persecuted, the biggest Baptist church, or biggest church in the country, uh, period, because he wouldn't be under government control, thought I was in America. But 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 get into Franklin Graham, your article, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention uh, coming out and saying, get rid of the Second Amendment. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's imperative that Christians and non-Christians alike understand that this is a very, very serious attempt to dismantle the Second Amendment. And unfortunately, we have many evangelical leaders such as Franklin Graham, Richard Land, and many others who have taken the position that the state is always right and that you never resist, you never question the state. And if the state says that you are to register your guns, then you're supposed to register your guns. If a universal background check, then, then so be it. Uh, as we know, the FEMA camps have been, I'm mean, excuse me, the FEMA uh, has been instructing pastors for many years uh, in, in schooling them in when the, the president declares a national emergency, uh, the asking the pastors to instruct the congregations to surrender their firearms. This has been going on for years. You've been reporting on this for years. So have I. And, uh, and, and by the way, four years before it was declassified, we broke it with Pastor Butch Paul, yourself, and others here right. on Genesis, and we broke it nationally. But people couldn't believe hundreds of pages of training manual. They found out the pastor went and threatened him, kicked him out of the hospital where he did free ministry for people. And it gets worse. There's the red light. FEMA training to take guns and have pastors prepared for it. They're planning to come for the guns. This is like catching, you know, the Nazis, you know, infiltrating the White House or the Chi Coms. I mean, th- th- this shows the authoritarian creeping nature that they're they're waiting for these shootings, which a lot of them they're staging. Yeah, the res- whether they're staged or not, the result is the same. They're using the opportunity to come after the the people's guns, and this is where I think that the, the book that Tim and I have written is so important, Alex. Instructing Christians that nowhere does the Bible teach 
that they are supposed to surrender their guns. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus said to Simon Peter, put up thy sword, uh, they that live by the sword die by the sword. That has been misinterpreted so much by Christians through the years. It has nothing to do with surrendering your guns. In fact, Simon Peter kept his sword. He put it in a scabbard. Jesus protected him. The power of his voice knocked over the soldiers that came to arrest them. Simon Peter and the other disciple that was armed walked out of the Garden of Eden with their arm. By the way, it was against Roman law for them to carry a Roman sword. Absolutely. They were slaves. They were captured. Stay there. All right. He's with us for another 30 minutes. He'll be uh, riding shotgun with Dr. Greg Dixon. We're going to tell that story of a church now many years ago. Was it 12 years ago uh, that their employees even paid taxes? Paid the withholding, all that. The church said, we're not going to handle money. We're not indentured servants. We don't have to do this. We're not under the government. We don't want your 501c3. And they came and stole their church and and arrested everybody. And, uh, I mean, that's Soviet Union, ladies and gentlemen. That's why the churches have all rolled over and said, we'll push abortion. We'll say turn the guns in. Billy Graham's son uh is out there, you know, saying you don't need guns. It is so demonic. And I can't wait to read your new book if it's anything like Romans 13, full of all the quotes to give to these preachers. They already know the truth. But again, they don't really want to be preachers. They want to be married to the state. They are high priest of the state-run churches. Uh, let's go back to uh, Chuck Baldwin. Chuck, you were trying to get into Romans 13. What should we be saying to Franklin Graham and the rest of these people that say, you know, turn your guns in? Uh, the big Catholic newspaper said, quote, repeal the Second Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are they going to do with, with, with the words of Jesus uh, when he told the disciples that if they needed to sell their clothes, uh, whatever they had to do, go buy a sword. Uh, what are they going to do with that? What are they going to do with, with the fact that Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old Testament? And we have the, the command of God in the Old Testament of, of many of the uh, deliverers of Israel to arm themselves and to defend and to conquer. Yeah, God never armed. told his people to lay down. No, never. They always resisted. If you were going to take out of the Bible all of the stories of resistance, you would reduce the Bible by probably 60 or 65 percent. Many of the great stories that we revere as Christians in the Word of God, both Old and New Testaments, have to do with resisting civil authority, all the way from Daniel. That's right. The authorities are always resisted and always, you know, know, put in the line. But the love stuff, turn the other cheek, is with your family, with people around you trying to work things out. That's where uh, a, a correct pastor, we see the turning the other cheek, not letting people set you up. Go ahead. Well, yeah, and and all this is covered in our book, To Keep or Not to Keep, Why Christians Should Not Give Up Their Guns. We, we go into all these passages of Scripture, and we deal with them individually, one by one, and we show that it does not teach submission to tyranny, that just the opposite is taught. There is a revealed and natural law given by God for self-defense. That is a an eight- Inalienable right. Weapons everywhere restrain evil, as Thomas Jefferson said. It, it is a biblical principle. It is a natural law principle. It's founded and grounded in the word of God and the precepts of scripture. And for Christians to take the tack that government is God and that we are to do whatever government says, regardless of how scriptural or unscriptural it might be, is idolatry. I mean, let's call it what it is, Alex. It's idolatry. It is the worship of the state. And I'm what I'm concerned about is that there are many pastors and Christians out there that really aren't maybe uh, in, in their hearts understanding what they're doing. But they've been taught this so long and so often that they just think that's the only accepted theology. They've never been taught anything else. That's why in, in 1775 and 76, Jonas Clark had instructed his congregants at the Church of Lexington for years before the events of April 19, 1775 on Lexington Green, which took place right in front of the church house where those men worshipped every Sunday. And so whenever that day came and they came, they marched on Concord to seize the arms, they were able to stand in front of them, those men and men that were mainly the church congregation of the Church of Lexington, Pastor Jonas Clark. They were able to do that because the pastor had taught them the principles of liberty for many, many, many years. Well, and most of the militias were left by the preachers. That's why the King of England said, damn these black brigades. (laughs) That's right. That's a quote. 
We've, rec- we've resurrected the Black Regiment on my website at chuckballmanlive.com. If you're looking for a Black Regiment church, you might find one there. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Resurrecting the Black Regiment. Stay with us. Pastor Dixon coming up. All right. If you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, there is undoubted persecution against Christians, libertarians, conservatives, anti-abortion people, pro-lifers, pro-Second Amendment groups. We get countless calls on air. I see it in the news. I I just all I do is read news all day where they'll say, yeah, man arrested for his bumper sticker, pro-life bumper sticker. And you're like, that's got to be a joke. Or, um, you know, uh, family went to anti-government rally, children taken, or anti-government people wouldn't give kids vaccines, children taken. There is no law to take the vaccines. But the family courts aren't real courts. They're so devilish. They were set up uh, as a, as a uh, race sterilization operation in 1910 in New York. See, I know the whole history of it. People are like, well, the judge said we didn't give them the shots, so they took the kids. And they just eyeball you, and if they think you're ignorant, and you don't know how to fight back, they go, sign this, you'll get your kids back. And you sign it, you're admitting you're bad, and then through fraud they go, ah, I've got the confession. I mean, these are authoritarian criminals all over the place. And look, if you're good cops out there, and you're getting mad hearing this, well, you're guilty. Because I'm not talking about you. The system is corrupt. There's no doubt some jurisdictions are better, haven't been totally taken over. But this country is evil. This country has rationalized and rationalized. Now, I want to read to you the, 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 in fact, will you guys pull up the First Amendment online for me? Uh, I need to have my pocket constitution. It's normally, normally in here. Somebody, somebody picked it up. Uh, all orders of books and videos get a free pocket constitution. First Amendment starts with Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And then it goes on, or freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, or the right to, you know, assemble or redress of grievances. But, but you, you, there it is. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievance. Okay. Now you never heard it was Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This country. You know, my dad's family goes back to the Mayflower. This is very rare, by the way. It's, it's 200 plus thousand Americans are living, had somebody on the Mayflower. My mother uh, had two people on the Mayflower. I uh, forget his name, the barrel maker and the famous woman. They got married. The lowest guy on the totem pole was the uh, barrel maker. Uh, they got married. That's my ancestors. And then my dad's side, kind of a scoundrel of a guy, but the captain of the Mayflower. Now, the whole point here is, ladies and gentlemen, they had gone, and my mother's gone and visited where my family was from in England, and then went over to the Netherlands. She, she's been over there, uh, you know, where they have the original little, uh, uh, you know, churches of the pilgrims. They were going all over the place trying to just try to read the Bible and not worship government. Because everywhere else you had a government run church and they spied on you. They didn't teach the Bible. Didn't matter whether it was England's fake Protestant churches, you know, from their perspective, the Catholic church, all of it, it all became political. And so that happened. So I want to explain something to you. This country was founded on religious freedom and they could still never get it in the colonies because people would take over and try to make you follow their, their version. So when you see the churches saying we're 501c3, which just turns them into a government charity, a government corporation. See, in the 50s, they all the denominations said, sign on to this, you still get your tax exemption. And they got tricked. Oh, really? And it was a contract fraud going from a church outside jurisdiction into a contract. Now, Pastor Greg Dixon had the biggest standalone church in the country. It was all over 60 minutes, you name it. Uh, you know, anti-globalist, anti-New World Order, you know, just Bible-believing. Biggest church, Indianapolis Baptist Temple, 8,000 plus member, uh, 41 years. And his son now pastors it, but it's, it, it's a, you know, but they had been 501c3 and he can, you know, tell the story better than I. And then I've got Chuck Baldwin with him to go back and forth here. But the point is, is that they, they came and took their church. Now they said, well, you've got to pay taxes. Their church members paid the fake income tax, but it's not the church's job to collect it and run it. That's indentured servitude. And now you see the churches of America starting to say, you know, abortion's good. You know, turn, turn our guns in are good. They're not even churches. And, and in just a decade, this has happened. 
And now they have the clergy response teams, mainstream news, telling their flocks, turn your guns in, it's of the Lord. America, the National Catholic Review, repeal the Second Amendment. This is happening. And and whether you're Catholic, Protestant, whatever it is, and even if you're not a, 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 a quote, Christian, you better be concerned. Because when the churches become state-run, you've got authoritarianism. Now, Chuck Baldwin, you want to introduce this topic, and because I know you're an expert on it as well, and then uh, bring up uh, Pastor Greg Dixon, a graduate of the Baptist Bible College, Springsfield, Missouri, in 1953, and of course, uh, I mean, f- famous Baptist preacher in his own right. I'm not going to go over his whole his whole bio. There was a 91 day quote siege where they wouldn't leave the church, and but the media called it a siege, like they were terrorists. And uh, we'll we'll give you their website as well. I mean, I'm ranting here because this is so evil, and it's just accepted now. So so explain what's happening here, and did I break it down correctly, Pastor Chuck Baldwin? Yeah, yes, you did. And, and Greg and I go back a long ways. He's a dear friend. I'm glad you got him on. Uh, everybody should be familiar with this story. What you said is exactly right. Uh, Greg Dixon was preaching the gospel without the 501c3 tax exempt status, uh, the tax issue that you described was, was what happened. And they came in and then, by the way, people need to realize that this took place under the Bush administration and, and uh, GW Bush. In fact, this is one of the first things that the new GW Bush administration did was seize Indianapolis Baptist Temple. First time in history that uh, a, a church in the United States had been seized by the federal government, and that happened under a Republican presidential administration. And we know why, because they were getting ready with a faith-based initiative to buy off the churches, so they had to get rid of the major group that was resisting it. I think they wanted to make Greg an example. Uh, he was the guy that they saw as the thorn in their side, and, and they wanted to make him an example. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, they didn't kill the church. His son is still pastoring. They're still growing. They're still preaching. Uh, they're still winning souls. They're doing a great job for the Lord. But they definitely seized the church, and they, they uh, sent a message uh, to preachers all over America that you better, you know, kowtow to the IRS, or we're going to come and get you. And again, spun it in the media like they stole money and demanded millions. Every dime had been paid to the offshore Federal Reserve uh, uh, crime group. They just had the members of the church individually do it because Congress can make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Uh, right. uh, uh, Pastor Greg Dixon, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to get into your story for people, but you... You broke it all down, or you could say prophesied, it wasn't hard to do, that that as you guys went down, the church would become a pure organ of Satan, and now by and large it has become that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate being on the program today and appreciate the great work that you're doing. Thank you, sir. I'm holding in my hands right here uh, the front page of the Indianapolis Star uh February Wednesday, February the fourteenth, two thousand one, the headline says Feds sees Baptist Temple and the front uh, page and it has the picture. You can show one, viewers. Uh one hundred uh, federal marshals came in and broke down uh, the doors of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple and it says Fed seized Baptist Temple. Well they didn't <laughs> they thank God they didn't fee- they didn't seize the Baptist Temple. Uh, they they did uh, carry some of us out, and uh, but we were seen worshiping together the next night at uh, the Jonathan Bird's cafeteria, the convention center out there. So they and stole the land and the building. They've been they didn't... worshiping together ever since. Yeah. So they they, they did seize the buildings uh, and uh, sold off six million dollars worth of property, twenty two acres of land right in the middle of Indianapolis. And uh, sold it for a million and a half. And there's where we had a Christian school. Uh, they now have a charter school. We say they have a communist school now where we were teaching the Bible. They're teaching atheism where we were teaching the free enterprise system. They're teaching communism where we were teaching creationism. They're teaching Darwinism. So anyway, they've got their charter school there now. But uh, the church is still going right on. Praise God for that. But nevertheless, the church is still there. I think it's very important and it's good to, good to uh, uh, be united with my good friend Chuck Baldwin again. It's We've been good friends for a long, long time. We were comrades together in arms with a moral majority back uh, in the 80s. It's always good to be with Chuck again. And uh, he's a great soldier 
of the cross, I can assure you that. But I think it's important for people to understand that in, under, under communism in China, they had the three self movement. The three self movement was this. State recognized churches, state financed churches, and then the church was to espouse state propaganda. That's exactly what we have in America. We have state recognized churches through incorporation, through uh, 501c3 recognition under the IRS. Then you've got uh, state finance through churches through the tax deductible gift and tax exemption. And then the churches are to espouse federal public policy. Now, that's exactly where we are. The reason that the churches won't take a stand and the pastors won't take a stand is because they don't want to give up their tax exemption and they don't want to give up their tax deductible gifts. Because this is uh, all of the uh, all of the religious organizations in America who are not churches. They couldn't exist without the tax deductible. gifts. So they're worshiping the golden calf. That's right. And the churches could not exist without the tax deductible gift. The First Baptist Church of Dallas, downtown Dallas, they have just built a massive, massive new building project right downtown Dallas. They couldn't do it without the That's where my grandma went when she, uh, you know, I tell you what, stay there. We're going to come back and talk about what this means. Even if you're not a Christian, folks, having a state-run church means look out, look out. We are in trouble. Uh, but here's my bottom line, Pastor Dixon. I want you to recap your story and, and then now what you see happening with the churches and then get Pastor Baldwin's take on it. But it's simple. People that give in to corrupt governments, they get totally overrun because then even more evil people who will push it further will get into government and then more evil and more evil. So you end up getting kind of a survival of the most evil. And that's why you end up with human sacrifice in every culture, mass death, worship of government. And this worship of government is, is, is the opposite, uh, of what, uh, was, you know, given to the Israelites by God it was the first time you don't worship government, you worship God. You know, it's like they said to, hey, Saul, you don't want a king. Israel, you don't want a king. And you, know, you, you follow what God says, and so no one can then dispute that. And so we we are the sovereigns here with only God above us, not the state above us, because whoever you put above you is God. And we've now made the state God, and it's now acting like God, and it's now saying it's God. And Chris Rock is saying Obama is our father. No, El Jefe is not my father, okay? Okay, my physical father is David Jones, but my spiritual father is Jesus Christ. What do you say to that? Well, what you're saying is absolutely correct, but we're, uh, but see, we, we're going through the same thing that Daniel went through with Nebuchadnezzar, that the three Hebrew children went through, that, uh, that the pastors went through with Hitler. And let me read it to you. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. In 19, in 1998, under Clinton, under the Clinton administration, this has all been documented. In the, the, the uh, all of the alphabet soup agencies, including the CIA, the FBI, uh, the IRS, uh, under the under the uh, Janet Reno uh, uh, Justice Department, came together together in the White House, and uh, the uh, the not for profit division of the IRS that controls uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand churches in America. And their purpose of the meeting was to devise a plan classified as top secret called Operation D. And that to devise a plan to control all uncooperative churches in America. Incredible. To put together a plan. And they said that uh, their, their plan was, to, uh, was a, a five-pronged plan. It included the financial power of the IRS, international pressures using the treaty powers of the UN, the investigative and intelligence forces of the FBI, wow. CIA, and NSA, the judicial and prosecutorial assets of the U.S. Justice Department and federal courts, and congressional legislations. Now, 
they used all five of these against our church to bring us down. Our church was the first church that they used to bring pressure and to muscle us down. Our first church. This is pure author- This is pure authoritarianism. When 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 reporters get detained in China, it's national news. But then we get arrested trying to do interviews or trying to hand out literature now or get tickets. I mean, we have become an authoritarian state. Now, prior to this, TCAN in Texas, and uh, I'm not going into this uh, in great detail, but prior to this, an organization called uh, TCAN in Texas went through thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, United Nations documents and came to the conclusion that the goal of the United Nations is to eliminate every local church on earth to eliminate every local church on earth. Now, that's what they're, That's what this whole issue of Islam is about right now. They're using Islam now to destroy Christianity, and then they'll turn around after they get through with that. Then they'll get. A, then they'll end up. Then they'll. Then they will destroy Islam. But right now they're using Islam to destroy Christians. Exactly. Notice how they can't have Legos of Jabba the Hutt saying it's anti-Islam, has nothing to do with Islam. They're using it as political correctness to bring in and say you can't criticize Islam out of the Bible or, or you can't criticize homosexuality or you can't because that, you know, that violates hate speech to shut down and bring in one world religion that the UN openly is calling for. Pastor Dixon, stay there. Pastor Baldwin, I'm going to get your take. On this when we come back, and everybody get the book, Romans 13, at InfoWarsStore.com. And I wanted to ask Pastor Baldwin, before we go back to Pastor Greg Dixon here, uh, of ChuckBaldwinLive.com. You can go to the BiblicalLawCenter.com for Pastor Dixon's excellent site. And everybody needs to direct their pastors and preachers to this, because I'm not even judging people that are 501c3 and don't really know or they don't really understand. You need to go convict them. You need to give the book Romans 13 to them. You need to send them to the Bible Law Center because it was our churches that led the war against King George, and it's going to be the churches that lead in the forced inoculation, the the, the, the gun confiscation. I can play newscast where they say, we are training for gun confiscation, forced inoculation, and to tell the families to go to the FEMA Center. It's of the Lord, Romans 13, do what you're told. I mean, I've played that clip probably a 100 times. Just type in, Clergy response team into YouTube, you'll get the newscast four years after we broke it. Okay. It's so creepy that they've been training the preachers to tell their flocks, just like in Red Dawn, they use the mayor and the preacher when the Soviets take over to go. I mean, this is classic right out of an authoritarian novel. That's what I'm getting at. It's got people got to wake up. What do you call waking up or being in denial? Because the people are given a great delusion. I mean, the Bible talks about they were given great delusion. You've got to be in a flaming delusion to not see that evil is just going hog wild and that it's going to persecute good people. Even if you go along with the New World Order but secretly love God and you have a good heart, they're coming after you. That's what I'm seeing. The system releases criminals, pays al-Qaeda to murder Christian communities in Syria. Uh, I mean, the, the system hates good people and not all departments are like this, but you can see, like the Bible says, certain cities get taken over by evil. You can see the evil cities versus the ones that aren't fully taken over, but the body snatcher operation is ongoing in every town now. Evil is on the offense right now, and I want to ask, who will you know lift up a standard, the Spirit of the Lord to lift up a standard of when the enemy comes in like a flood, Pastor? Yeah, absolutely, and the only ones to do that are the pastors. They, they are the key. Uh, back in 1775 and 76, if it were not for the colonial pastors, the so-called Black Robe Regiment, uh, there would have been no Bunker Hill, there would have been no Lexington Green, no, there would have been no uh, Concord Bridge, no Declaration of Independence, no Constitution, there would have been no United States of America. It was the pastors of colonial America that literally led the war for independence. They preached, they taught. They exemplified. Many of them participated. And the enemy knows that. That's why they're going after him today. Absolutely. That's why they're they're neutered. And that was such a a stroke of diabolical genius back in the 1950s when Lyndon Johnson created the 501c3 tax-exempt status. 
Uh, it, it really was. From a diabolical point of view, it was a stroke of genius. Because what it did, it, it, it allowed the government to control the churches and the preaching especially, uh, the preaching of the churches via the threat of the loss of tax-exempt status uh, with the IRS codes 501c3. So what has happened since, and c- coupled with the Romans 13 uh, misinterpretation, obey the government no matter what, what you have is a, a, a double whammy against the pastors and churches. And the result is what we have today, a neutered, silent, scared, pitiful, pathetic pulpit. Until the pastors begin to awaken, energize their congregations. and preach- Have you heard churches all over the place are, are, are being told, pull the crosses out? I mean, I mean, I mean, pretty soon there'll be nothing. I've heard of that, uh, and I, you know, I, I I keep hearing more and more of this type of activity taking place. And you got to ask yourself, where is it going to stop? And the fact is, it's never going to stop. But these churches have been indoctrinated also in the universities and the Christian colleges and the seminaries. It's all about success, Alex. It's about money. It's about four hundred one k retirement. It's about insurance plans. It's about getting ahead. It's about using the current church. Well, they could just turn the church into a swingers club then. Maybe that get more people in the door. <laughs> well, unfortunately, there's probably too much of that going on, too. But but the fact is that, they, that what they've done is, is that they've created this this social organization that is is success oriented. It's, it's all about climbing the ladder, just like a, a businessman. Who wants to, uh, you know, further his business? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to bring you back in a moment to talk about the Second Amendment issue with Pastor yeah. Dixon. But let's get Pastor Dixon's take on this. How but, do we reverse this? These points I've made. The persecution well, of good people is accelerating. But not only that, many of these men, even fundamentalist men, are sincere in believing that soul winning is the most important thing. Therefore, they are justified in in taking these not for profit gifts. They are justified in compromising, so to speak, as long as they're winning souls. And they we've got to somehow break through this this malaise. Somehow we have to break through. See, for instance, the preachers are saying, "Well, they're not telling me what to preach." Well, that's like saying. Uh, uh, well, they're not telling me not to speed. Well, uh, you drive down the highway and you see a speed limit sign and it says 50 miles an hour speed limit. Well, just because a policeman doesn't come to you personally and say you're not to speed, that doesn't mean you're not supposed to speed. Well, just because the head of the IRS the not for, for profit division of the IRS doesn't come to you and say personally to you, or you don't get a letter from them saying you're not to espouse public federal public policy, or that you're not supposed to endorse candidates or specific legislation. Doesn't mean that you're not supposed to do those things. You you can read the contract. You you can read what the law says. Now, for instance, that's right. You've signed a covenant, so don't cop out and say you haven't. And look what's happened to the churches. And look at how selectively all the pro-abortion, all the anti-gun churches, they can say who who to vote for. But if you get a constitutional church out there saying something, here comes the IRS. What's the IRS doing in a church? The answer is you're not a church now. You are a government corporation. That's exactly correct. Now, let me show you. The IRS is keep every single preacher in America who speaks out on any public policy issue, and it gets in the newspapers, it gets on television or radio. The IRS is keeping a file on that preacher the date that they gave that speech or the sermon whether it was on the Internet or wherever it was. Let me give you an example. That's church police. That's absolutely correct. I there was a, They kept a secret file on me that went clear back to 1971. I'm just going to give you a few of the headlines that was out of the Indianapolis Star. 1971, Baptist High School to stress Bible. 1978, Reverend Dixon fights daycare license. 1978, church plans tech school. 
1981, pornography target of downtown rally attended by 1,000. 1983, Reverend Dixon opposes lottery bill. 1983, churches to fight encroachment. 1985, state laws may collide with church. 1986, group to obey Jesus, not government. 1987, Dixon opposes Governor Orr on school. And they're putting this in the newspaper because it's... Uh... As if, as if it's a list of your crimes. Oh my gosh, a church went down and rallied against pornography. They're not allowed to do that. I mean, what well, country is this? Well, what world, what's the world coming to? A church against pornography? Now listen to this one. How many churches, how many preachers, Chuck, have you heard say, well, but when they tell me they can't, I can't preach against homosexuality, I'll do something. Listen to this one. Gays urge panel to include them in anti-bias bill. But guess what? Old Big Mouth was there. It was opposed by Reverend Greg Dixon, 1990. That was the headlines in the Indianapolis Star. Now, this was just a few of them. I don't, I'm not going to take time on the broadcast today to read all of them. This was in, this, this was in uh, we got this through discovery. This was in our file. We got it through discovery. They'd kept a secret file on me since 1971. You think they don't have a file on Chuck Baldwin? You don't think they have a file on Jeffers, First Baptist Church in Dallas? You don't think they have a file on every preacher in America that's speaking out on these public issue policy issues? This is, listen, fusion centers, that that term comes directly out of East Germany. They, when I first heard this, uh, 12 years ago, I didn't believe it. I looked up the federal purchase orders. They hired Marcus Wolf for three years to set up Homeland Security, the former head of the Stasi. This is directly out of East Germany. They actually set up what we're now seeing uh, launch in America. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can say all you want to about, well, we're going to get some pre some attorney to help us. We're going to get some some attorney to fight for us. These attorneys will run. And they'll have their tail between their legs because in the first place, they're going to the minute you get into court, they're going to say you signed the contract. You signed the contract. Isn't that the problem in America is that, I, I, I mean, I don't think of myself as a tough guy or something, but I have no fear of them coming after me, what may be in the newspaper. They may set me up. I just have peace other than wanting to resist them. I don't have peace there. What happened to the spirit in America? Because because I'm a pretty wicked devil, and I absolutely in my heart want to resist these people in my soul. Where are the men today? Where are the people? I mean, they don't even hardly pr protest abortion anymore in this country. Where is it? I guess we're just going down. That's one of the reasons that, see, when we were, when we were, the Bible says rebellion is worse than witchcraft. When our church was a, was a a corporation, a five hundred one c three non for profit corporation, we obeyed all the laws. We withheld taxes. We 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 did everything. We dotted every dot, i. We crossed every t. We did everything. But when we unincorporated, when we got out of the system, when we were no longer a five hundred one c three, we said no more. We didn't do any of those things. We stopped being a federal a tax collector for the government. We stopped. Uh, we stopped uh, paying uh, uh, the collecting uh, uh, federal income tax. And and we, our position was that these people are not employees. They're ministers. Well, they the spin it like it's it, it, it's 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 demonic to resist a corrupt government. But but I mean, resisting is one thing. I mean, obviously, rebelling against God is super evil. But 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 they they call churches rebellious that don't submit to the government. Uh, what do you say to that Romans thirteen issue? Well, in the first place, if you've signed the contract, you better obey the contract. But that's what the that's what the biblical law center does. We help churches to organize and reorganize so they can get so they can be free from five. And they're doing that successfully by the thousands. So, well, I can't. I'm not saying we're they're doing it by the thousands. No, no, there are a lot of churches starting, but, and a lot of the ones that are. I mean, I got friends right out here that go to churches that have been around for decades and aren't five hundred one c three. I know, but there's more to it than just uh, 
I mean, there's you've got to you've got to. That's why the biblical law center is trying to. It's it's more to it than just. Uh, I, I'm telling you, there's more to it. And that's well, listen, we'll get you on. To, we'll get you on for a full hour sometime just to get into the law aspects. I know you've been through it yourself. You're the experts on it. But I wanted to get Chuck Baldwin's take here on the state of the Second Amendment, and then get your take, uh, Pastor Dixon. I mean, now the churches. Well, l- let me ask Dixon briefly. What do you make of the first? You know, the uh, Southern Baptist and all the rest of them coming out and saying, basically, turn in your guns to the government. Well, in the first place, we're seeing now a a specific line between fundamentalists and evangelicals. And we've been trying to tell them that all along. There's a difference between fundamentalists and evangelicals. And so these wimpy evangelicals now are wimping out. And so it's, <laughs> so we're seeing it now. And so the evangelicals, uh, they, they want to be seen as these nice guys and go along guys and to get along guys. And so they're saying, well, we can, we can give in and we can give in on it. And they're doing the same thing on the immigration. They're saying, uh, well, I was a stranger and we took them in. Well, uh, I appreciate that verse, but it doesn't mean that you have to take uh, some wicked people into your home and turn your children over to some predator just because the Bible says, I saw a stranger and we took them in. It doesn't mean that we Well, the have point to- is it's globalism. It's pure UN ecumenical takedown of America, and it's all moving now. And it should be an alarm bell. If your church is telling you you shouldn't own guns, ask why the government has guns. We're supposed to be the government. You say render unto Caesar. We are the government. The Bill of Rights is the government. That's what you follow. That's the biblical law, not the law of the satanic UN. Pastor Baldwin? Yeah, it's... Uh, thanks, uh, Alex. This this is a, a, an issue that I, I'm just really passionate about right now because I think this is the defining issue uh, for the future liberty and freedom of our country. The the semi-automatic rifle is the most efficient, the most effective self-defense tool in modern time. It is equivalent to the Roman sword of the first century. Jesus commanded the disciples to to buy the Roman sword and to possess the Roman sword. I would remind people that back in the Old Testament in Genesis 14, uh, back before the the law of Moses or anything of that nature, uh, when Lot was taken by five heathen kings, uh, he armed his servants. He Abram. They went after them. They they took them uh, to to the battlefield. They fought. Uh, he slaughtered the kings. He rescued Lot by by the power of the sword. The the, the ability to defend oneself is a fundamental natural law principle that is given by God, whether we're Christian or non-Christian, and no matter what our denomination or lack thereof. The right to self-defense is sacrosanct. It is sacrosanct, absolutely, and it is given by God. And and for preachers to acquiesce on this issue is absolutely, in my opinion, blasphemous against the laws of God. And unfortunately, uh, Greg, I think you'd admit with me that there are many of our brethren uh, in the fundamentalist ranks that have capitulated on this issue just as evangelicals have. Well, I haven't heard, I haven't heard any in our unregistered church preachers. <laughs> oh yeah, no, maybe not those guys. No, not those un- uh, unregistered guys. I'm sure they haven't. But there's a lot of guys that would call themselves fundamentalists that teach this asinine interpretation of Romans 13 that no matter what the government de- declares that you are to submit. And I've, I've known some of these guys. I know some of these guys personally. Well, well I would say that I'd call them, I'm putting them over in the evangelical camp. <laughs> Well, listen, just to be clear here across the board, guys, undoubtedly, what do you call this massive explosion of evil moving on all fronts, swarming us? What do you call that in history and biblically, what we're going into, a quickening, an acceleration? But Jesus said that in the last days, many, many will fall away and we're living in that day that, that many many are falling away this is the great falling away that day will not come until there come a falling away first and that's exactly what we're seeing well i think i think we're also seeing the age old principle of self promotion 
the idea that I am going to get ahead, I'm going to be prospered, I'm not going to uh, endanger myself, I'm not going to risk anything. I think that's innate in in many people that it's they don't want to risk, they don't want to endanger themselves. Don't they and know they, fortune favors the bold, and, and I mean our oh, fortune yeah, is liberty. Yeah, no, well, no, they don't. They, they, you know, for so long, they have been taught and indoctrinated in this principle of submission to government. This has been going on for nearly a hundred years. I mean, this, you got to go back to, uh, the war between the states probably before you found preachers that were really talking about this. Since then, the preachers haven't been talking about this. Just the opposite, Alex. They've been talking about submit to the government. The government is good. The government is of God. Don't resist. Do what they. This has been indoctrinated in them for 150 years, probably. Well, look, so, look, look. I'm not on some high horse because I'm not a preacher and I'm not perfect. But I have a relationship, you know, with God, and I and I love, you know, innocent people. Want to protect them. I don't know how you couldn't have burning in your bones to resist what's happening. And I don't know how these preachers can actually be saved Christians and sit there and promote all this evil. Pastor Dixon, what do you say to that? Well. All I can say is that uh, I'm not going to say that, that, that they're not saved, but I'm going to say they're sure they're they're sure deceived. And the Bible says de- deceived and being deceived. And I'll guarantee you they need to get back and take a, a new look at what the scriptures teach. But I think it's just a, a total misunderstanding of the whole purpose of the Christian life. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And uh, Paul the Apostle said, ye have not yet resisted unto blood. And we're to resist even unto blood. That's what Paul the Apostle said. And uh, we're to resist with everything that was that is within us. And we've just become so soft. We have everything is so soft. Sure, the Bible doesn't say lick the devil's boots and he'll flee from you. That's right. That's right. And uh, everything we we're, we everything is so soft today. We have such soft lives. Uh, everything, soft men. Men are soft. That's right. And we've become so feminized as men. And uh, we've we've just we've, we're enjoying. We're at ease in Zion. That's that's what the Bible says. It says we're at ease in Zion. And. Uh, uh, the scripture says that Ephraim turned back in the days of battle, and that's where we are. We've well, I'm not back. at ease. Yeah. I'm not at ease. I mean, I just, well, I, uh, uh, I don't well, know how I anybody don't. can be at ease when you pure evil's rising all around us. But well, Alex, Alex, let's remember, too, that let, let, let's focus again on the importance of standing for the Second Amendment. I, I, I just can't stress this enough. Oh, yeah, if they get that, they get we, everything. We we must draw our line in the sand on this issue. I mean, I have publicly said and I've publicly written. You, you've read my stuff and you you've seen what I. I am willing to be a lawbreaker when they tell me that my semi-automatic rifle me too. is against the law. I am willing to be a lawbreaker. I will not submit to that law. I will not register my rifles. I will not surrender my rifles. That's why they hate Heston so much. He said, for my cold, dead hand, it's that not submitting, because they always want a little more, a little more. We said, no, no more. You will not pass. That's why, again, I have to say, that's why Tim and I wrote the book, To Keep or Not to Keep, Why Christians Should Not Give Up Their Guns. If we do not take a stand as a church, on the the issue of the right to keep and bear arms and preach it from a biblical natural law perspective sure. and make people understand that they are morally justified they are spiritually justified in violating any law that requires them to surrender their guns if we don't take that stand and draw that line now there is no liberty left in America. I cannot stress no, no, that. And I want to state something. It's so immoral because we know they want the guns to enslave us. We know they're authoritarian. So you are aiding and abetting the enemy in what they're going to do. And that's why anyone that promotes it knowingly, like these police chiefs and stuff that know, they are active collaborators with the enemy. They are globalist operatives, and we know who runs the New World Order. They are agents of Satan. And we and, and that's not a verbal flourish. These people are agents consciously of the devil. Go ahead. 
Well, yeah, I appreciate and, I appreciate what uh, you're saying, but what you have to understand is, and this may sound Pollyanna, but the First Amendment was written before the Second Amendment. And no, I know they have the right. I'm know, saying no, no, they want our no, guns no. to devour us. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I want you to hear me for just a moment. We gave up the First Amendment. Now, we didn't, the church, the Bible says judgment must begin at the house of God. That's right. And the preachers gave up the First Amendment. And if we weren't willing to fight for the First Amendment, why do you think they're going to be willing to fight for the Second Amendment? That's right. Well, I'm going to fight for the Second Amendment, and I know there's a lot of others that are as well. I right. tell you what, five minutes to overdrive, five, gentlemen. Five Back in 60 seconds. I want you both to get a final word. Infowars.com. Back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Infowars.com. I want to give uh, Pastor Dixon two minutes to finish up, and then the last word to Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Chuck Baldwin, live.com. Uh, BiblicalLawCenter.com for Greg Dixon. Uh, Greg, two minutes. Well, uh, I appreciate uh, what Chuck said, and I'm not talking about him. Uh, I just want to reiterate what we what we were saying, that uh, uh, the preachers, I'm talking about the preachers, uh, if, they, if they're not willing to take a stand on the First Amendment and fight for God and the right to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ unfettered, free from government, why in the world do we think that they would be willing to fight for the Second Amendment? That's the point that I'm trying to make. And once again, uh, I rejoice uh, that there are still uh, programs like this one, and uh, we need to support uh, 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 Alex Jones, and, and we need to stand and, and give thanks to the Lord that we still have freedom of the press in this country, that we still have programs of this kind, conservative broadcast, conservative television. We I trust that uh, you go to our website, um, thebiblicallawcenter.com. Uh, I'd like for you to get my book, The Trail of Blood Revisited, How to Be, how to be Free, Getting Free from 501c3. Yeah, we need to carry that book because I, I, I've read excerpts and I'm down to read the whole thing. I want to get you back on in the next month for a full hour on breaking the bonds of enslavement over the churches. We'll talk to you very soon. Thanks for all the time, Pastor Dixon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You bet. Had the biggest church in the country and then found out about all this, did the right thing, and is now uh, trying to bring the church out of bondage. And again, even if you don't believe in God, folks, when the government takes over the church, you're in trouble. Final comments, uh, Chuck Baldwin, Pastor Baldwin. Yeah, Alex, thanks a lot. And, and Greg's a great man, and I appreciate you having him on. Yeah, I just think it's absolutely critical that we, uh, regardless of whether we call ourselves Christians or not, uh, whether we go to church or not, that we understand the moral biblical principles that undergirding the Second Amendment, that the battle is being waged right now over the right to keep and bear arms. This is where the battle is raging. We must not capitulate, compromise, or surrender this issue. If we do, there is no more freedom of any kind left in the United States. And a lot of times I'm finding that many unsaved, unchurched people are more willing to stand for the Second Amendment than many of my Christian brethren. And I find that really disconcerting. It's because they've got, uh, they've got instincts. They've got sure. gut. And they're good people who probably yeah. deep down love God. Absolutely right. God fearing people. I hear in our, in our fellowship in, in, uh, the Flathead Valley of Montana, Liberty Fellowship that I started a couple of years ago. Uh, we have people of, of, of all uh, types that come to our fellowship. Some don't even profess to be Christian, but they appreciate the biblically based principles of liberty that we preach every Sunday afternoon, uh, from our pulpit that's live streamed at libertyfellowshipmontana.com. So I, I'm finding people of all kinds and all shapes and sizes that are willing to stand. And I'm very encouraged by that. What I'm not encouraged about is people like Franklin Graham and Richard Land and so many of these other preachers across America that are not willing to stand up in their pulpits for the Second Amendment. So I encourage people, if they're attending a church where the pastor is not standing up for the Second Amendment... Speak out. Speak out. Thank you, Pastor.